what's up everybody this is dj keo and i was browsing uh digital dj tips my boy phil because it's 2020 now you know you're just getting bombarded with new gear i started thinking about like, do i really need this do i kind of need this i don't know if i need this should i buy this should i get rid of that so uh <laughs> here's this article and i think this is the perfect article for this time of year um basically it's an article with five reasons of why you should think twice about upgrading your gear. And he makes some points, some stuff I agree with, some plus stuff I'm kind of like, eh. But uh, let's go, let's take it step by step. Let's go through all five, and then I want to hear what you guys think below. So let's start with number one. So the first reason why he says that you probably shouldn't upgrade your gear is the crowd doesn't care what you're playing on. And I kind of agree with this, but not really. Um, I've done gigs where the person booking me requested me to play on turntables. So that's happened before. Uh, so like they were worried about the optics of they wanted it to look like a DJ, even though it's a corporate thing. Um, they wanted it to look like a, a DJ DJ rather than just some guy back there pressing buttons. So, you know, from that standpoint, I, I kind of understand where they're coming from. And to the, some degree, if you're, if you have a booth up, like you're walled off and they can't really see what you're doing, you just have headphones on, nobody can tell what you're playing on. Like it's almost irrelevant what you're playing on. I mean, that's a huge fact of life for a lot of DJs. We're the only people who care about these things. Normies, if you will, and just regular people, they have no idea what kind of DJ equipment is, if it's old, if it's new, if it's trendy, if it can do all the cool things. So. I mean, from that standpoint, I, I kind of, I'll give it a yes. So the second thing he said is that the basics needed for DJing haven't changed in decades. And this is also kind of true. Uh, you can get the job done with a CDJ, two turntables. Like, it's basically the same thing. You know, you, there's loops and stuff like that, but that's in the software. They Most of the new things, and it's one of the reasons why I say to separate the pro from amateur thing. Pro gear means that all of the features on the software are on the hardware. So if there's a loop roll, I don't need to go into Serato and press the loop roll button or, you know, try and jimmy something with a, a MIDI button, whatever. You know, I don't have to go through all that garbage. Like there's a button designed specifically on the hardware to do that. I mean, the basics are all there and most of the basics are available to you in the software as well. It's just, do you want to go up there and press the keyboard or press a mouse to do it? Um, but for the most part, I think most of the features is fairly available to everybody, even people with old hardware. So I'm going to go with yes to that. So the third thing he said is uh, people use the promise of new gear as an excuse for not actually DJing. So I, I got to read this further because I kind of don't follow his argument. So he says, when I can buy the blank, I will be able to DJ how I want and then not hustle and da 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 da. So I get what he's saying. I don't necessarily agree. I'm not sitting at home thinking if only I had new gear, then I would go out and do a party. Like I'm, I'm doing parties because I'm working. Um, so I kind of, I, I gotta press X for doubt on that one. I don't, I don't really follow that one. The fourth one is limitations and creativity go hand in hand. This I agree with. And I kind of made a point about it in one of my last videos where I was talking about when you have too much music available, you kind of, your creativity goes out the window and you're just playing the next song and the next song. And it just, it just, it's bland and boring. You're basically doing what everybody else is doing. But when you have a limited set and you need to flip it and make things more exciting, you know, you're going to start using effects more. You're going to start doing remixes and this kind of things. You do this because you're limited with your what you have available to you. So I, I kind of agree with that. So I'm going to give a check mark for number four. Number five, any flashy features you want but don't have can usually be hacked. Uh, I agree with that. Uh, you know, you could do a MIDI button or some kind of patch or something or plug something else in there. Generally, everything that you want is available on the on the computer, or you can kind of mod your hardware to handle that. Uh, you know, for the most part, there's certain things that well, no, you can MIDI map anything pretty much. 
I, I don't know. I, I kind of have to agree with that. I think the problem with the new gear is that, you know, when you've been doing something for a while and you see the new sexy and it looks brand new, it, it, it's this thing of, okay, you got to get it. I'm like that with cameras. I, 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 I'm, <laughs> I look at camera gear all the time. I'm like, wow, look at the dynamic range on that. Oh, maybe I need a lens. And like, realistically, I pretty much do everything I want with my camera gear and my DJ gear. So I kind of feel there is some kind of parallels between the two worlds. Um, yeah, I, there's this rush of the brand new sexy or an old and busted. And, uh, if old and busted is working, I think that's probably the best thing for you until it doesn't work anymore. And then you need to think about uh new sexy, but I'm, I'm indifferent about this. I'm basically what you call a cheap ass bastard and frugal shopper. <laughs> I need to physically, I can't buy anything that I, I didn't touch. Like I need to physically see it. And that was my issue with the rain 72, like online. And I was like, Oh my God, look at this thing. And the pictures and I saw people using it. And I was like, yes. And I saw it in person. And I was like, this screen sucks. So yeah, this is my mentality is I, I need to see things in person. I need to touch it. And then, and then I don't buy it right then and there. I play with it for a while and then I go home and I think about it. And then I come back to buy. So I, I kind of, I've eliminated the impulse shopping, which is kind of hard because most of this DJ gear is over a thousand dollars anyway. So it's not really an impulse buy. You know, a a ten dollar, fifteen dollar record, that's an impulse buy. Fifteen hundred dollar controller, that's not an impulse buy. But you know, my mentality is like it's so whoa, <laughs> slow down. So wait, do I really need this? Let's so wait and see. Anyways, I wanna know what you guys think. Let me know in the thoughts below. Do you guys buy stuff to see, can you see something fancy? You just trade in your old gear and get something new or do you wait it out? Um, I'm in the wait it out camp and I basically try and ride it out until it breaks or I really, really need something, you know, depending on the situation or whatever, but that's just how I feel about it. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and uh, peace out. Baby. <laughs>